Hey, good morning. Today I want to talk to you about this concept of acceptance a little bit further. A common question that people always ask when I make a video or a statement about acceptance is some sort of, yeah, but what about when they're being really nasty, really venomous, attacking, etc., etc., etc.? Should we still accept them? All right, well, I want to answer that question, but I have to give you a little context first about what we mean by acceptance, what we're accepting, what we're not accepting, and more. I hold the belief, because I believe it is an effective way to be in the world, that people are not their behavior. And what I mean by that is I believe that people have a core essence that is, a, is good. At their core, they're really generally doing their best. And so when somebody behaves badly, uh, I'm able to see that this person still has intrinsic worth intrinsic value as a human, intr intrinsic significance that is not derived by their behavior. So if we can see the world that way, then we can see the person in front of us for that intrinsic value. We can choose to hold in high regard the person that we know uh, they are, our spouse is, or our girlfriend or whatnot, underneath their worst behavior. If we don't hold this belief, then our only option is to basically create a value for people based on their behavior. And that, in my opinion, is a recipe for misery because if people's value and worth and significance is not intrinsic but goes up and down with their behavior, then we can only really accept and therefore love them when their behavior is perfect. That means that we need to live by the same standard and should only expect to be loved and considered valuable and worthy and significant when our behavior is perfect. Perfectionism really makes no one happy. I've never met a person who holds the standard of perfectionism that isn't completely just besieged by fatigue and frustration and shame because shame is what drives us to compare ourselves to a perfect ideal and routinely and constantly and reliably come up short. That's because we're trying to perform our way to having this thing we call value, worth, and significance, and it just doesn't work. There's no path to security as a person, and therefore there's no path to intimacy and vulnerability because an insecure person cannot be vulnerable in any kind of reliable way in the world because they feel this need to be perfect. And so anytime they mess up, they want nobody to see it. They don't want anybody to see their flaws. They don't want anybody to see their, their ugliness because they feel they feel that, those, that they're going to be rejected, that they're ultimately going to lose out on things like acceptance and love. So when we can see people as having this other way that they have a nature inside of them that's actually really good, that is lovely, that has value, worth, and significance, and that it does not actually change with their behavior, then we have a basis for accepting that version of the person, meaning we choose to keep holding in high regard Another way of saying that is unconditional love, the person. And we can isolate the behavior of the person, the actions of the person, as being different from the, the person themselves, right? If we are all our behavior, we're all in pretty deep caca, right? Because we don't really have a recipe for having the basis for strong, loving, intimate, vulnerable relationships. And therefore, we're, we can't find connection. We can't find these deep things of the human heart that we want if we believe we are our behavior. If we are not our behavior, then we can accept one another as significant human beings that are full of value and worth and that are worthy of love. Even if in this moment, their actions do not actually uh, appeal to us very much, right? So does this mean then that when they are acting horribly, that we're just supposed to accept that? Am I saying that? Absolutely not. I'm a huge fan of having boundaries for self. And so if I'm around a person, even though I hold them in high regard, I'm seeking to love them unconditionally, and I want to believe the best about them, in the moment that they are not being their best behavior, I need to have a boundary for myself. I need to be able to say, listen, because I hold myself in high regard, because I believe that I have value, worth, and significance, I'm not going to sit here and be called nasty things. I'm not going to sit here and abide somebody just being toxic towards me. But 
I can't just say to that person, you need to change, you need to stop your behavior, you need to do X, Y, Z, because now my power then is really, uh, you know, wrapped up in their control. I have no, I have no agency to be happy as a man, to have a sense of well-being if I need them to change something in their action. What I need to do instead is rely upon that self-agency, that responsibility for myself to say, listen, Sven, this person is being toxic. You can't expect them to change. You can tell them that you would like to see their behavior return to something that reflects their true nature. And another way of saying that is to say, you know, I, ex I expect or know that you're capable of more. You can do better than that, this kind of thing. But I still, at the end of the day, need to, to act myself, right? I need to get up. I need to leave the room. I need to say, listen, I'll be happy to talk to you when you're in a clear state of mind and when you can be respectable um, and respecting in your conversation. Until then, I'm taking a break, right? This is, in my opinion, what a good boundary looks like. It's, it's something that says to me, when X, Y, Z happens, I do A, B, C. And so there's always uh, basically a condition and an action at which I act in a different way. And so th this is how we go about life by, uh, in a way that we accept the person, but we do not accept all of their actions. And in my opinion, this works really well. And if you give people the space and you take ownership for what is yours, then it allows people great freedom. And it, it, it itself is an act of, of acceptance. If someone is in your life and they're being toxic, and you stop demanding they change, and instead you see yourself as the one that needs to take action to get up and leave, you're actually loving them, believe it or not. You're showing them unconditional love by not demanding that they change to suit your need, but by yourself getting up and removing yourself and going and doing something different. So I hope this has clarified the difference between accepting a person and accepting their behavior, what to do with bad behavior, uh, what this means for us, and more. I know this is a complex topic, way more than I can say in a video, especially because I try to keep my videos under 10 minutes. So if you wanna talk about this idea of high regard and how to accept a person but not accept their behavior, and you're a little confused on some of the you know, the ins and outs of that and the tactical and the spiritual and the inside game, etc. I know it's confusing. I want you to just reach out to me. You can go to SvenMasterson.com. If you look in some of the menus, you'll find a way to contact me. You'll also find a way to fill out a form for a free session. I would love to talk to you more about this and I will see you on the other side of that screen when we do. All right, brother, take care.